It was an early spring morning at the local high school. Miley was standing by his locker to get ready for first class in math when his best friend Mark showed up. Oh, hey, Milo. Oh, hey, Mark. So, what's up? Uh, not much. Get ready for the first class. What do you have? Math, you, English. Well, you're getting valued English. Don't you don't expect that much, said Milo back. <laughs> That's true. Uh, by the way, I have to ask you something. What is it? Um, well, do we have any plans for the weekend? No, not really, said Milo. Why you ask? Well, I thought maybe if I could come over, play, if you can, I don't know, play video games, as we had done since middle school. Yeah, you can actually can do that. The only thing I do had is, he said my dad told me to do some cleaning in the garage, play some boxes. Other than that, yeah, I pretty much can do it. And you can actually probably sleep over from from Friday to Sunday, since my parents won't be home for the weekend. But you may need to ask your parents first for permission. Yeah, I can do that. No problem with that, though. And suddenly, the bell's not ring. Oh, uh, we probably should hurry for the first class before you even get light. Yeah, uh, see you at lunch in the cafeteria later. Yeah, see you then, said Mark. And Miley. Mark is not only Milo's best friend, but he's also his oldest friend. They have been friends ever since elementary school. And Milo seeing Mark as a brother since they have been doing things together since always. And he's always been there for his best friend, no matter what. Milo didn't have any problem with Matt the first class and a few others afterwards. Around the lunch break, he went to the cafeteria to see his best friend, Mark, and he saw that Mark was sitting by the table with... with Linda, another friend of his. Over here, said Mark, waving his hand, and Milo walked over to them. So, you here you are, and, uh, hey Linda, and this evening this morning, but you didn't have a class for this first morning. Uh, English with... Mark, as always. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about like it. So, anything else been happening for you two? Mm, not much. So, any plans for, I don't know, the weekend? Ask Linda. Um, well, me and Mark are planning to, well, spend the weekend to play video games, as always. Yeah, that sounds like something that you two would do. What about you? Ask Milo to Linda. Um... Well, I'm going to be actually watching my younger brother and sister for the weekend. See if my parents will be away. Uh, that's something that you would do. Yeah, but I don't mean they don't fight or anything. They just, you know, something I would get paid for at least. <laughs> that sounds true. But while they were eating the lunch, suddenly they heard a voice behind them. Hey, Milo. And Milo turned around and saw it was actually Lisa. Lisa was one of the popular girls in the school. Oh, hey Lisa. Um, what's up? Not much. You seen what you have been doing? Uh, you know, the normal things. <laughs> um, I want to ask you something. Yeah, well, that's, what's up? Um, are you busy this weekend? Um, yeah, actually, me and Ma me and Mark are planning to spend some spend the weekend together. Why? Um, you was asking if you maybe want to spend time with me this weekend. Well, maybe next time. Yeah, maybe next time, said Milo, and and Lisa left. You know that she has a crush on you, right? Said Linda back. Yeah, I know that. Wait, you knew? Mark smirked. Well, yeah, is it obvious that she had a crush on me? Well, that's true, said Mark. Anyways, let's more enjoy the lunch and continue to school, bro. Yeah. But as they were eating lunch, they heard something in the some disturbance in the, in the further back in the, in the cafeteria. Hey, that's my seat. Get away from that table. Get another one. And they immediately turned around and saw it was Lisa. Lisa was talking to a guy in another table. They recognized a the guy to be by the name Andy. Andy was a shy guy around the school. Even though he had a lot of friends, but he was a bit shy and reluctant to be most sometimes by himself. This is just a table, said Annie back quietly. Well, this is my table. Leave, or I had to force you away from it, said Lisa, a little bit angry. I can't believe it that she was doing that. 
I mean, Andy's a kind guy. He's never been a much of a pushover, really much of a... Never been a much of a fighter of it, said Mark. Yeah, agreed, said Milo. But anyways, Andy just stood up and you walked to another different table, and Lisa sat down by herself. I just wish that someone could tell Lisa to stop doing that, said Mark. Yeah, I agree with that too, said Milo. I mean, not just saying that though, but she's doing is absolutely wrong. I mean, Andy's a kind guy. He's never been in much of a fight with anyone before. And that Lisa is a big bully. She's always mean to almost anyone in school. Well, except for you, said Linda to, to Milo. Yeah, but... I just hope that someone could stand up against her for once and telling her off that that is the wrong thing to do. Especially if it's someone like Matt to Andy. I mean, we have known Andy since like what, in middle school? Even back then he was always a bit shy but never been much a problem for anyone. But there is now that since we've been to this high school, Lisa has always been a much a problem for Andy or a few other people in school. I can't stand it anymore. But there isn't much else he can do. Well, you could try to defend him at least, maybe. Well, maybe I could, but I just don't know, said Milo back. After lunch was over, Milo and Mark and Linda went to their different separate classes the rest of the day. And after class, after school was over, Milo was waiting by his car for Mark, since he was going to drive Mark home since his parents were unable to pick him up. Pick him up. So, you remember to ask your parents about the allow to stay at my place for Friday to Sunday? I need to know that. Yeah, I remember that. So, any plans for the otherwise this weekend? Nah, you know, play video games, maybe eat some pizza, something like that. Yeah, I mean, the day was actually not that bad. I mean, Except for what happened in the cafeteria, said Mark. Yeah, I mean, I just wish that someone could stood against her for at least for once, telling her off that telling what she is doing is the absolute wrong thing to do. It just made me angry. Since Milo had non tolerance against bullying or anything like that, but even though he wished that he just could stood up. And walked over to, to Lisa, telling her what she's doing is absolute wrong and also goes against the school's anti bullying policy. The school has a strict rules against bullying. It could lead to be suspended or maybe to detention for a week, but if there's something severely, it could be suspended for up to one or two weeks or even in the worst case as it's been expelled. But no one has ever been stand up against Lisa over her bullying to, to either Andy or any of the others. Even though who had been bullied has never been brave enough to stand against her or even tell any other students or even a teacher. Milo wished that some way, someday that all that could have changed to the much better if something would work. After that, Mark has been dropped out by his house by Milo. He went home. Milo saw that his parents was at home. They are probably at work instead of himself. But when he came home, his sister Kate was over at the couch watching some TV. Hey Milo, how was school? Uh, you know, the same, the same. Ah, uh, I get it. Mom and dad is work? Yeah, they will be home a little bit later. Uh, what are you watching? Ha, ah, nothing special, you know. Just swapping from channels to see something worth to see, but you know, there are always old reruns, so I just want to do something else. So, did something special happen in school? Asked his sister Kate while he sat down on the couch. Uh, not, not really, except that Lisa once again have been bullying this guy Andy in school. What again? Poor guy, I mean. I can understand that he's never been one to get stand against her, but this shenanigans of her to be a bully, it should stop by, by now. I mean, I thought maybe someone would, would be brave enough to stand up for her, but seems not like it will happen, said, said Kate back. I wish it had happened, said Milo. 
Anyway, so Kate, what have you been up to today? I mean, I know you were had a day off from work though, said Milo. Yeah, I mean, I haven't done much today. Just watched some TV, had some lunch, pretty much it. Anyways, I'm going something, something to get, some something to eat, and just maybe do some, play some games in my room. If you need me, just call for my name. All right, I'll do that. Milo went to the kitchen, made some sandwiches, and went to his room and played some games on his computer. But even when he was playing games, though, he could not stop thinking about this guy Andy, especially for what has been that he has been a target for Lisa's bullying for over for at least about a few months by this point. And he cannot stand to see it anymore. Because only last year, there was a guy that also was very targeted by her Lisa's bullying. Eventually that he couldn't stand anymore, so he just dropped out of high school or he was transferred to a different school. He wasn't sure what really happened to him. But this was one of the last drop that Lisa had been doing at a different student. Milo said to himself, I should tell someone about this, or at least maybe talk to Andy about this, that being targeted by Lisa. This is pointless. I can't stand anyone like this any longer. I should tell someone, but who can I tell without pretty much any problem with? But then he realized, what's one person that he could talk to? The principal. Principal Wilson. Principal Wilson was actually a cool man. He was the one that most students looked up to. And he was probably the only one that that Milo could talk to without getting much in problem with, with anyone else. So he decided to see Principal Wilson Wilson by the next morning before the first class. The next day, Milo went to the to the principal's office and asks the secretary if that he can see Principal Wilson from before the first class. Well, Milo, this is an unexpected from you, he said Principal Wilson, said the secretary. Wilson, Milo was known at the school that he has been a well-known guy for helping others no matter what happens, like if they're homeworks or anything like that. He was well-liked by the staff and some other students. But yeah, he has not had any meetings right now, so I can ask him. Principal Wilson? Yes. There is a student here, Milo. He asked for to be in, talk to you for a moment. Ah, Milo. Yeah, let him in. Welcome, uh, Milo. What can I do for you? Um, well, there is one thing I would like to talk to you about, said Milo. Well, sit down. Let's take like, a talk for like this. Milo sat down, and he wasn't nervous or anything, but he knew how Principal Wilson would be reacting, though. But he was now at least happy this problem would be taken care of. So, what can I help you with, M Milo? Milo was silent for only a few seconds. Well, Principal Wilson, there is um, a problem that's been going on at school. A problem? I have never been aware of any problem. Well, there is this student um, has been bullied by someone else. Wait. A bullying situation again, said Principal, Principal Wilson. Yes. So, tell me from the start to the finish. Who has been bullying and who has been, that is, who has been doing this? Well... Well, one of the students is Andy, and he is among the few that has been bullied by another student by the name Lisa. Lisa. And he remembers Lisa to be a very quiet, outgoing girl, very popular. I know her, but I can't believe she's been doing this. Well, I need some evidence first, though. I mean, if it's possible to have a conversation between me and Andy, well, Principal, I don't know if the Andy might be in a admitted, but it's all good to try at least. And do you know if any other students have been bullied by her, by name? I'm unfortunately no, sir. 
I only know that Andy is the only one that has been bullied. But if you need any other witness, you have at least two more. I mean, my friends Linda and Mark saw that it happened in yesterday in the cafeteria. Tell me what happened. Well, we were just sitting there having a lunch when she screamed to tell him to leave, get off the table that he was sitting by. Because it couldn't hurt, it was her table and that he hadn't had the right to sit there. And so he just, without doing anything else, he just stood up and walked to a different table without doing anything, saying anything or doing any fights. Which to me is a little bit brave that he didn't do anything to stand up against her, but I think this should have been stopped by this point. I, I agree with you, Milo said to Principal Wilson. I will talk to him afterwards. Thank you. After that, Milo left the this, his principal's office and went to first class. He was worried that all well, this was going to happen. But as he was having his third class in science, when the speaker suddenly went off, Can Andy please come to the principal's office, please? And he knew now that he was actually going to talk to Andy. And he felt a bit this proud this happened, that someone actually stood up once again. And it wasn't until around, around lunch break when he sat down to talk to Linda and Mark. So, anything happened especially during the class today? Mark asked. Uh, no, not really. Well, except for one thing though, said Linda. What was that? Well, if you heard the principal in the speaker, yeah, I think you heard about that. Yeah, actually, Andy left the classroom and went to his, to his principal's office. Do you know what anything about that could be about? Actually, I do, said Milo back. You do? Yeah. Um, I went to talk to him before the first class this morning. What did you two talk about? Well, it mostly about that he has been targeted by this stupid bullying about from Lisa. Ah, that makes sense. At least someone else has been standing up against her. But then, suddenly, they saw Andy walking by and he sat down at another table and he looked a bit sad, but a little bit down at least. Well, not much difference though. I wonder if he told, told the principal anything. Well, who knows. But only a moment later, Lisa walked by the table and stood there. So, you're sitting by my table again? But this is not if your table. But this is my table too. Please leave, or I have to force you away from here. For once, Milo could not stand it any longer. As he seen that Lisa was just screaming at him, Milo stood up and walked over to Lisa by the temple once again, for the first and last time to tell her to stand off. Lisa, this had to stop, said Milo angrily. Milo, what are you talking about? I'm talking about your bullying Andy and a few others here. This had to stop. And this isn't your table. He's allowed to sit at this table and you can't say any other otherwise. Because you don't have one particular table. Yesterday, you saw just that that table over there was yours. So he said it's a different. And now he's sitting in this table, which is a little bit further away from the yours, and saying this is your table too. You don't own any of these tables, said and my little bit angry. And other students just looking. You're making a scene, said Lisa a little bit quietly. I don't care if I do make a scene, little Lisa. This is, has a point. This had to stop. And in fact, I did tell the principal, Wilson, of this student in this morning, that you have been bullying Andy and a few other students, and he was not happy about it. Since the school has a non bullying tolerance policy, and you have broken it, you know what the punishment is. And Lisa was quiet for once. She had no idea what to say. But she was dumbfounded. Lisa just stood there without saying any word. He just walked away and didn't say anything else. Are you okay, Andy? 
said Milo. Y yeah, and thanks. I mean, no problem. I mean, I can't stand anyone to be bullying anyone like you or anyone else in the school, despite having a this uh, severe punishment. You can be hit with detention, suspended, or even expelled. I mean, I just can't stand it anymore. I just want to see that someone else managed to stand up against her for once. Yeah. And I'm sorry about that, though. No problem. Um, anyways, hope you enjoyed your lunch, though. You too. Milo went back to Linda, to Linda and Mark, and she sat down, and everyone else continued their, walked to the, continued their lunch, and... That was brave, said Mark. Yeah, but someone had to do it. I mean, who knows what, how much else Andy could have been tolerated anymore. Yeah, but I wonder what her reaction will be afterwards, said Lena. I don't care, as long as he doesn't bully her, Andy, or anyone else, I'm fine with it. By the end of the day, Mark actually was picked up by his mom, so Andy, like Milo, was standing by his car, he was ready to get ready to get home, when suddenly... Milo! Can we talk? And he turned around, and it was Lisa. What do you want? said he angrily. I know what did was wrong, okay? I'm just... I'm sorry about what I did was the wrong thing to do, okay? I didn't mean that this to happen. You didn't mean that? You know... Back in middle school, you were a different person. You were still outgoing, really, very cheerful girl, girl to be around with, but now when you became here, you somehow switched different personality. I don't know if many others will probably want to be born want to be around you anymore, but please, just give me a chance to prove it. Alright, but if I heard anything like you've been pulling others in any way, I don't really want to see or talk to you ever again, you hear me? I, I just can't stand the bully, and you know that. And I'm telling you, telling you that the same for you. I don't want you to be expelled. I know, said, me, said Lisa. By the rest of the week, everything went actually well normal at the school. Lisa stopped bullying Andy, and even though that most of the students prefer not to be in, they want to look at her or even talk to her, but eventually, she started to get, uh, get around from that, and after about a couple of weeks, everyone has moved on, moved on to what happened, and she has started being having some friends again. But even though, but even though that, even though that Milo was very cautious, but but after not been hearing that she hasn't been bullying anyone for two weeks. He was actually happy though that she had moved on and stopped. Even though Principal Wilson had also made it a statement to Lisa that he gave her just a warning this time. Next time he would give her Lisa detention, but if it had continued, she would have been given suspended for at least two weeks. And she agreed and she has stopped since. But one day in May, both Milo, Andy, and Linda were in the cafeteria having lunch when suddenly the speaker went off. Lockdown. School is going to into lockdown. This, repeat, this is not a drill. School is going to lockdown. And it suddenly went silent. The school has never been actually, actually never been in an actual lockdown before, but only drill. But, but Linda looked frankly terrified. She had actually been hearing stories of different schools about lockdown that some people had snuck in with a gun or anything like it. But what should we do? And they were only like those three, they were only the three people and a few others in the cafeteria. But suddenly, as they were hearing in the golden hallway outside the cafeteria, someone was screaming, Wait, is that a gunshot? said Eddie. Yeah, that sounds like a good one, said Anne Milo, the terrified. But as they were doing it, as they were about to do something, the door just slammed open, and there stood a person. But before anyone had any reaction, 
this person just stood there, pointing his weapon, firing at different at different locations like a handgun. Both Andy, Milo, and Linda managed to sneak uh, snuck, duck down on the table, but as if doing that, the person hit Milo in his chest, or at least in the more stomach area, and he fell to the ground. Both Linda and Milo saw it happen. They were terrified. As the person just walked around, screaming, Where is Lisa? I need to find her! Everyone didn't know what to do. Everyone else was hiding under the tables or anything like that. Screaming. This guy was keep screaming, Where is Lisa? I need to find her! Give me Lisa! He did that. And he stood near the table, right in front of the table where Milo, Linda, and Andy was, was hiding beneath. As he saw them, and he pointed his weapon right at Andy again. Where is Lisa? He demanded. And Milo recognized the guy immediately. It was Michael. Michael was a former and a student at this high school. He was always also like Milo, a bit shy person, or, or at least preferred to be alone. But he asked, Why? What do you want from her? I want to find her! She had crossed the line! He said demandedly in a screaming tone. She bullied me! I want to end her life! He screamed. And he realized, Michael was one of the students that had been bullied by Lisa. But Lisa hasn't has stopped the bullying. But Michael didn't care. It seems that he had unfinished business with her. He wanted to take care by ending her life. And in the meaning perspective, so that he would have felt safe from her bullying. But Milo tried to calm him down. Michael! She hasn't been, she has stopped bullying. She isn't even here. I don't care. Where is she? And I don't care if she stopped bullying and stopped bullying. I wanted to find her. Where is she? He screamed and demanded. I, I don't know. Tell me or I fired again. <laughs> I don't know. Probably in the, in the classrooms. Or maybe somewhere else there. But Michael didn't care. I want her here now, he screamed. One of the teachers who were in the class in the cafeteria tried to calm down the situation by walking up to him. Don't you dare, Michael said, and pointed his weapon right at this teacher. And the teacher was just freaking out. Lay down, he demanded. And the teacher did that without a question. I want Lisa right now. But as they were doing this, Linda Ray noticed something. And he was bleeding very much. But as Michael was walking a different different part in the cafeteria, how is he? He's losing a lot of blood. He must have been hit to some part. Okay, use my use my shirt to, to stop the bleeding. Stop doing that! Michael turned around quickly, pointed weapon. He's bleeding out. I need to stop the bleeding. I don't care. Listen, let us let me stop the bleeding. If you you don't want to have a murder on your hand, I don't care. That is exactly what I'm doing for Linda when I find her. He screamed, and he realized. Milo realized it was pointless to try to even talk to him. He was a mess. Knowing how much Linda had been bullying him, perhaps even more severe than my Andy, and it was pointless. As he was looking around for Lisa, but Milo didn't care. He took off his shirt, put it on the wound on, on Andy's chest, or in around the stomach area, to try to stop the bleeding. Okay, Linda, try to hold this pressure on it. What are you going to do? I'm going to find help. Are you crazy? But this guy you're shooting at us? There's no way. 
Well, do you have any other bad idea? I mean, there's no way he will let anyone else out otherwise. And even if someone tried to call for help, he probably started shooting a person as well. Stop saying anything! Michael turned around again. Anyone who speak will have a bullet in your head! Michael screamed louder. And everyone started quietly. But Annie, hold out. And he just nodded and even on any pain. He nodded again. Okay, just hold out. Let me die, please. Are you crazy? I'm not gonna let you die here. And Milo whispered. I'm not gonna let you die because of this. I wanna lose someone I really care about. Wait, you care about me? And this was the first time Milo actually realized. He had a crush on Andy. And that losing Andy would be not very much difficult. But he had to readmit to himself. Yes, I do like you more than as a friend, Andy. But please, hold on. You will be safe. Linda heard that, and she said, Yeah, try to hold on. He's a good guy. And as long as be quiet and he doesn't even hurt you, this will be over soon. I hope. But suddenly, Michael turned around, but not then, for once. He turned around the different table. How dare you are, Lisa! He screamed. And it was right. Lisa was hiding under beneath some other people in the table. He like to man to her walked out, crawled under that, and stand in front of her, in front of him, pointed his weapon at him. If you don't, I will shoot anyone else here until you do it. I don't care. But Lisa was terrified. But Milo said to himself. If she doesn't do anything, he was out firing about any anyone else, and we, we don't want that. What should we do? said Linda quietly. I had something idea, but you're not gonna like it. What? But Milo didn't say a word after that, because then he crawled under the table and stood up. Michael. Michael quickly turned around. What do you want? Please, let me talk. I don't want to talk to you. I want her, he said. Listen, I know it's like to be bullied. Do you know that? Yes. In fact, I was bullied too. Ha, <laughs> by Lisa? No, but someone else. Much worse. Ha, <laughs> oh yeah, boy, middle school. You remember Frank? Frank. Uh, that guy. Yeah, what well, about him? He bullied me. Uh, never heard of it happen. No, because he did it when there was no one else around. Oh, what did he say? Oh, that's good guy who doesn't want to have nothing else to happen. He's what Michael tried to make some. try to intimidate him. No. He said. Oh, there goes the guy, Michael, Milo the gay, the gay guy. Ha! As if he did say that. He did, Milo said. You're lying, said Michael. I'm not. What do I have to gain for lying from you for this? Sure, Lisa may have bullied you and Andy. But is it worth to be killing anyone because of this? Well, didn't you feel they want to run advantage of Frank then? Michael said, angry. Well, yes, but I managed to stop it. How? By telling someone. I told my parents, and I told a trusted teacher, and all they actually worked together and made it stop. Ever since then, no one had bullied me. And ever since I told Principal Wilson what she do, what the police have been doing, she stopped. She was willing to stop. In doing this, if you hurt her, you were not, not much worse, you were not even better than her. But killing her, you would be much worse than her. Michael, Milo said. And Michael was silent. But then he said, You know what? 
I don't care. She will have to pay for it. But then he said, Lisa, stand up! And suddenly, Lisa crossed quietly on the front table and stood up. Ha! I told you she wouldn't listen. And she doesn't even care if she dies or not. At least I get my revenge. No. Please, think about it. Is it worth getting, getting in jail for this? For murder? A follow another student? Milo trying to say that, but it's still more stern tone. Think first, Bact. Do you want this? Do you think your parents want to see you behind bars? Perhaps for the rest of your life? Is it worth it? He was trying to get into Michael's mind to find a reason to avoid from this been happening. But it seems very much pointless. Michael, he didn't even care. And then he tried to point his weapon towards Lisa. Lisa, it was fun to know you. And then it was about to trigger. And then it was a bang. And suddenly, someone dropped to the floor. Milo, no! She screamed Lita. It turns out, Milo ran up to, to Lisa just at the moment as Michael pulled the trigger and hit Milo instead than Lisa. And just at that moment, the teacher who was on behind on the on the floor behind him managed to sneak up behind Michael and snuck him right on the behind behind his head and made him drop the gun and fall on the floor on his knees. And the teacher was over him and holding it in a dreadlock, or at least a holding uh, shock in a shock hold to try to be holding him. Another teacher managed to call for police right away to happen. And what happened? Milo saw all of this before passing out. Milo, please, no, said Mike Leonard in a bed instant. Elisa just stood there in front of Milo on the floor, bleeding. She was so far beyond shocked. Her friend sacrificed his own life to save her. A few hours later, Milo woke up in the hospital on the next of his parents and his sister. What happened? He asked. Where am I? And then he saw that he was in the hospital. My, Milo, you're okay, said Kate. You goofer, you could die like that. What happened? Sweetie, you took a bullet. You don't even remember that, said his mom. Yeah, kind of do, but what happened next? Well, the teacher somehow magically knocked out Michael and had him on the ground that the police came to take him. What about Lisa? She is safe, but shocked still. And wait, what about Andy? Andy? Yeah, not the guy who's about also shot. He's... Is he dead? No, 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 said Kate's smile. He's fine. He was only shot in the in his, the ball passed through him, so he was, he lost some blood, but he is, will be safe. Ah, <sighs> that's good to hear. But, wait, what was I even hit, though? You were hitting it in your shoulder, said Kate. But, not much is serious injury. Can I go home soon? Yeah, you will. But there is someone else want to see you. Who? And then Lisa walked in. Milo? Lisa? Are you okay? She nodded. I just want to come by to see and say thanks. You, you shouldn't have done it. I could see anyone else be hurt. Even if it meant I would have died myself. But still, I couldn't even see myself seeing you die. But it's okay. I'm safe. You're safe. 
Michael is captured and my parents are also grateful that you did what you did. And to me, you were a true hero. You know that? Uh, thanks. But then he said, I may need a rest. I'm so tired. Yeah, it's your lady though. Libro said Kate. A week later, Milo returned back to school. When he entered his doors, everyone just turned around to saw him and started applauding and said, Here goes the big hero! And even Lisa walked up to him, gave him a hug and a kiss on the cheek and said, Thanks again, but there is someone else want to see you. Who? And she pointed at Linda, Mark, and Andy. And he walked up to him a bit slowly. Are you okay? He asked. Yeah, the bullet passed through, which is luckily though, but if it wasn't for you, I don't know what would happen. But I heard what you did. It's just stupid, but very brave. Thank you. No worries. So, what you said at that place in the cafeteria then, he said, really true. He rolled his eyes and said, yeah, what I said was actually true. I do love you, Andy. And then there was silence between them and suddenly, just kiss him a lot already, said someone in the background. Both Milo and Andy blushed and said, come here. And they actually gave each other, each other the first official kiss. Even after that day, though, Milo and Andy started dating. Both families were actually very happy and supportive. No matter what happened, though, but despite what they have, what happened to them, to which led them to be together, there was a very dramatic life that changed their lives both for them. But Andy said to to Milo that no matter what happens, he will always be their friend. And always be grateful that he saved his life, even though he did everything to save. And in fact, it happens sometimes that Milo invites Andy over to his place to play video games. It happens that Milo plays the games while Milo is on his phone, maybe talk to, to Mark or maybe Linda, just keep up with what's, what's happening in their lives. Even though their their relationship between Milo and Andy, the bond was so un incredible strong. Even after that, even this big event, even Principal Wilson had made had, had made a diploma for and for Milo to have done so much for his school, but especially that he sacrificed his own life in order to say protect one of the students, but also with his help that he managed to save and his life. Everyone at the school was actually saw him as a big hero, but to himself, he saw himself as just a regular guy who was, was doing what felt right to do. But no matter what happened, though, because his love for Andy only grew stronger from that day on, and they loved to spend so much time together, and even after they finished high school, they actually moved in together in a small apartment in town, and they loved it. But after high school, both Andy and Milo went to the same college. Milo went to study to be as a teacher, and when he was finished, he applied for this to be a teacher opportunity at the same high school that he went to, and he was accepted. And even after all those years later, he was immediately recognized by some old teacher but still there, and some other new ones, and, and his picture as when he was while well, he was still in high school, was still hanging on the wall as school hero. And everyone recognized him immediately. Even though sadly that Principal Wilson was no longer at the school anymore, but he was also there to remember the time what Milo did. And though, he actually went end up working as a mechanic in town in a car shop, and he liked it. And in fact, he was always had interest to work on cars, even since when he was younger. And he loved the job. 
and one day Andy actually proposed to Milo and he loved the idea and they actually did have a small wedding in Taos also. They decided to have a small wedding with close friends and family and even though they actually went to another different state to have their honeymoon for about a week in a cabin near their lake but despite that, they had some amazing time. And after being married for three years, they wanted to start a family. But they were actually then approached by, by Lisa. She asked if they, if they were willing to use her as a surrogate mother for if they want to have a family. Both agreed. And they decided to be the first to be the donor. And Lisa actually gave birth to a boy, which she named... Lucas, and only when only about five years later, they decide to have a, another baby. So Milo decided to be donor this time, and they actually Lisa gave birth to a, to a girl she named Jenny. Both Milo and Andy could not be more happier to now to have a son and a daughter, and even though that Lisa was also in their lives as their their mother to their children. Even though Milo had pointed out once that after some years after they got married that all this wouldn't have been possible when they were in the, in the cafeteria when Michael showed up firing up almost anyone, especially Andy. Even though all that happened, both was actually happy that they even realized their feelings for each other Despite we're in that situation, but Andy has said that Milo may have even revealed his feelings for Andy in maybe a different other matter, maybe at some different point, maybe at another time. And Milo thinks that he may have a point in that. But what happened was something that both and Willie couldn't explain it. But Milo said, Knowing that he might lose Andy at that moment, he wanted us to tell him how he felt for Andy, even if there was a chance that he wouldn't even make it. And Andy, he felt actually very pleased and happy to be known at least. But the bond between Andy and Milo after that event made them their love for each other just stronger. But now, being married, having two children with with someone they would love the most. Even Andy himself had always wondered if he even gonna find his true love at some point when he was younger. Because he admitted even back then that he was gay, but he hadn't even told anyone, especially only that he had told was his parents. But anyone else, no one. Milo though. Milo's parents and his older sister and his two friends knew about this. But that was the only one who knew about his secret. But at least they were happy to have found someone they really cared so much about. And this is how Milo and Andy found a true love and got a family together. The end.